Welcome to the Mike Up Much Podcast. Listeners, this is a very unique episode today because um, we are actually part of the Arkells Junket. So <laughs> I am here with uh, the singer of the Arkells and my friend and trusted producer, Max. How's hey. it going? And we also have Mike D'Angelis, the guitar player in the Arkells. Hello. And Mike, you're actually not the first between your uh, wife and yourself to be on this podcast. No, yeah, I'm, I'm second fiddle again. <laughs> <laughs> and the fourth person, is Shane, you're here. We're doing a four-man pod right now. I'm never here on the opening, or rarely here on the opening, so it's pretty cool. So, okay, the reason this is a, a sort of interesting thing, Max, and feel free to pipe in at any moment. Normally, we would do the opening, and then at some point, we would interview artists coming through. Uh, today, we're at 209 Queen Street West because... Our Kells are doing press. You guys have a record coming out called Morning Report. Yeah, it comes out Friday, August 5th. I don't know when we're going to get to airing this. But uh, normally, if, and you know, as the uh, producer of the show, I get to help choose who the our guests are that are coming in for the interviews. Yeah. And I was like, we are going to do a special on the Arkells, whether you like it or not, Mike. <laughs> and typically, though, we would just do it at your house in Hamilton, where we do all the interviews, and we'd, Mike would ride his bike over, Mike DeAngelis. We all live very close. Yeah, Mike lives about a five-minute bike ride. Uh, but literally, the only time we have to see each other and to actually get this podcast finished is like during our press junket today, like in the building. And we've already done four interviews in 299 Queen Street West, and, and, and another like six this morning. Yeah. It, now that you call it a junket, it is a junket. Yeah, it's a lot of junk. Tell us what is doing press like when you're on when you're in the the, the car wash doing uh, the meat grinder. God, we're tired. <laughs> 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 I mean, how would you describe? I mean, the other thing is, this is actually really nice because we have to put on our like smiley faces for everybody because we're meeting people, a lot of people for the first time, and they're having us in their studio, whether it's ET or CP24 or the Weather Network or whatever. But it really, my face hurts. <laughs> yeah, being being trying to be a, like a happy, charming person, which I wouldn't say is my natural mode. It's kind <laughs> of, it's a lot of, it's a lot of effort. So, uh, oh, did you go drinking last night, Max? No, I tried oh. to go to bed early. Like we just had like, because uh, we came from St. John's, Newfoundland. Before that, we were in Nova Scotia. Before that, we were in Chicago. So it's just been a crazy like couple of weeks, and we were doing press all day yesterday, starting from six a.m. basically. Uh, which is great. And it just means the team is working really hard. L- the label Universal and our management are setting up all the stuff. And at the end of the day, that's what you want. You want people to be caring about the record and to, pr- to promote it. Uh, but, and we're grateful for all that. But it's uh, a long, long day for Mike and I. Speaking of the record and promotion, um, you got a video out right now called Drake's Dad that Shane co-directed with her friend Mark Myers. Uh, and I feel like this thing is blowing up. They, they were talking about it like Time Magazine. Yeah, and we we had planned to talk about this video a couple of weeks ago, and I'm but I'm really glad that we're not that we didn't talk about it because so much has happened uh, with the video in the last three days, and we we could have checked in earlier, but I'm I'm glad we can finally just talk about it now. <laughs> Let, let's walk let's let's walk our listeners through th- from the very beginning the creation, how you guys even got the the job in the first place, because that's a contentious issue between Shane and the band. Yeah, this was a pretty annoying process because (laughs) it started months and months and months ago. And uh, Max always acts like I can direct any music video. He's like, what what do you want? Uh, I'll send you a song, you direct the music video. I'm like, so I go to Mark, who's my person I work with. Max does this with a lot of people. I, 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 I sort of have the front row seat to this a lot of the time. And just sort of he'll be like, you know, you'll be in the studio and he'll go to the producer and he'll be like, yeah, just just throw the, the what do you call it, the, re- the reverby thing and we'll just put it on the record and we'll just have the records printed and they'll be on the radio. It's fine. And he'll just like slam the door and walk out. And he's just like, what just happened? And the, the producer's like, I guess we're just going to go back to a the very difficult technical process that we were working on before that whole thing happened. So. Yeah, so he, he's always like dangling the carrot in front of your face like you're, you're going to direct everything. So I'm like, Mark, we're, we're going to do like a trilogy. We're going to direct the next three Arkells videos. We're going to be like their director. He's like, okay, what's the first video? I'm like, ah, let's do Round and Round. So I Which write, is a song off the record. You song off the record, Round and Round. Really like the song. The record Morning Report. We, uh, Thanks, we bust our ass. We do this treatment. We try to do the best job possible, even though we know it's in the bag and we're going to be directing this video. But we still try to give the treatment the respect it deserves. Send it to you guys. And then uh, it seems like we're going to get it. You guys kind of liked it. For whatever reason, we didn't get that treatment. Okay, no, well, It was like a close but no cigar type Mike thing. D., did you read that treatment? I did read the treatment. It was really good. It was very cool. Well, what it, happened? It sort of had this like, um, what, was that, what was that movie? Rushmore? 
<laughs> you just are saying movies. No, there was Ru- Rushmore was for private school, and that was also a really good treatment. Uh, the the one for Round and Round was more of like uh, what was that movie that just came out last year? It was like shot like one big old one shot and oh, Birdman. oh Birdman. Birdman. Birdman, yeah Birdman, yeah. So it was kind of like that. Uh, I and think that's, not to say that it's not. You a had Max floating in his underwear mm-hmm. in the opening. Scene. <laughs> <laughs> it's still a possibility. Just the little. The, I'm going to blame this on the label. And this is what a good artist always does. <laughs> yeah. Blame it on the management. Blame it on the label. Is whenever uh, you need to get out of something, you go. Oh, the label switched plans. They changed direction, and which is actually true. Uh, you know, there's a lot of possibilities when these songs were coming in as they're being recorded for what was going to be like a song to showcase first and then we thought it might be round and round and then plans changed and, and we, we were making a lot of videos i think and then it was just kind of like that song was not a priority it, so it that excuse was that round and round wasn't even going to be a single yeah yeah made into a video okay yeah. so that yeah it was a pretty decent excuse so we we're like <laughs> all right back to the drawing board let's do private school yeah <laughs> so then we we boss our ass again <laughs> You By the way, for those listening, Shane has a list out right now of grievances with <laughs> Max and Erica. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so we, we bust our ass. Can I explain get... Mark for a second? Okay, who's, your, who's your partner? Shane's directing partner. Mark uh, Myers. We've worked together on a lot of things, known each other for about six or seven years. Uh, former male model, all-round <laughs> athlete. He's uh, really Smartest nice guy in the room. Yeah. Most creative guy in the room. Great guy to work with. I did a feature-length documentary with him that he directed i produced and was like a co-star in it it actually made it on netflix called delivery check so, it out needless to say he's an unbelievably talented guy and he's a guy you definitely want to like steal the limelight with like he does a lot of the work and i kind of take a lot of the credit <laughs> so we have a production company called shane and mark production mike d's nodding his head right now looking at max <laughs> <laughs> similar to uh, similar dynamic. mike and max yeah <laughs> Both mics. Uh, <laughs> but so our production company is a big Shane in all capitals. And then it says and Mark and like little mice type. <laughs> so the joke is like I'm front and center and Mark yeah. just kind of is in the back. So anyway, we, we do private school. Then it gets sent to you guys. And apparently the issue was your girlfriends didn't like it. What was your treatment again? The yeah. treatment was you guys were... Uh, Basically, an all-girls school. Oh, yeah. Originally, we thought the song was called Private School Girls. Which I, I think it might have been used to be called Private School Girls. So it was reason. sent to us as Private School Girls. So we wrote the treatment. It was like Arkell's play a show at an all-girls school. And you think the girls are going to lose it because it's like, oh, these hot like Beatle guys are playing the show. But they're all just insanely bored and distracted <laughs> by like Instagram and Twitter and all the things that like girls are like so bored with. But... Anytime they do a post on Instagram they're or like Twitter, they're, the best they're acting like they're having the best time, which a lot of people do. That's true. That's a good treatment. So I thought it was a really good treatment. It was good. Someone's going to steal that now. That and then, to then, but the excuse was, oh, our girlfriends think it's sexist or something. Oh, but yeah. They're like, they want some more uh, guys in there. And we're like, well, we'll f- put guys in there. Who gives a shit? It's like, too late. <laughs> Steve-O from Sum 41 <laughs> is directing the video. And I was like, what the f-? And then I... <laughs> I look and I see that he had a Katy Perry video yeah. that got over 100 million views that he directed. Yeah. So I did a little detective work and deduced that maybe that's the reason why you picked him <laughs> and not because your girlfriends didn't like it. No, his treatment was good. And uh, no, there was some merit. I forget the conversations we had internally, but uh, <laughs> there was something about, I don't know, who cares? Anyway, whatever. Yeah, you know what? it's, it's funny because it, it all came full circle in the end with you editing the video. Like right? how you guys came crawling back. Cra- absolutely. And said, <laughs> Oh, like, can you guys please circle. edit this video, the yeah. private school video that you did not direct, but maybe should have. I'm <laughs> paraphrasing here. <laughs> so then we re-edit the video, and then we're thinking, okay, they're probably going to f*** us on the next video. <laughs> but since the Drake's Dad song is about a bachelor party that I partook in, I thought we've got a 50% shot of actually getting this video. So we kind of half-ass this one a little bit like our treatment, send it through, and then it seemed like it was going to go, but I didn't, I didn't hold my breath too much because we'd been screwed so many times before <laughs> by you guys. <laughs> Even though we had actually directed a video before for you guys, that was a, yeah. more years ago, videos. I should have yeah. mentioned that, yeah. which I actually ended up meeting my wife on. My, Which my is a whole other so story. I, I would say that, that there's a you're welcome in there. Somewhere. Yes. Okay. Thank you, but Mike. We got no budget on that video. We were told to do it for free. <laughs> and I actually ended up losing $700 in that we video. We paid you $700 for it. And then it cost $1,400. 
Well, a projector got stolen because we shot it at the YMCA in <laughs> Hamilton. Oh, yeah. And Tony's uh, our jacket, our keyword player, Tony, yeah, his jacket, his nice new winter jacket got stolen from the YMCA, too. He's very bitter about yeah, that. Yeah, he's like, he like, does not like coming back to Hamilton sometimes. We he's, lost he's money on bitter. that for sure. Uh, <laughs> okay, so let's get to Drake's dad. So then we find out we get Drake's dad, but obviously there's a huge problem in the fact that you, there's no way you can actually get Drake's dad. Well, it like seemed I tried impossible. Con- yeah. I, well, it seemed impossible. I tried contacting him every way I could. But first of all, talk about the song Drake's dad. Like, so when we say Drake's dad, that all came about because of this bachelor party run. So before we even get to the video, the whole song came about because you guys are in a bachelor party down in Nashville and you run into Dennis Graham. Ooh, don't say you. You were on it too, Mike. I was at Randall's Mike 40th birthday party. Oh, you party. weren't there. I know. It just seems like I was there. Uh-huh. Yeah. I know. It's the only one I've ever missed. I was at Mike D's in Montreal. I was at Shane's in Hamilton. Yeah. I was at Jugs in, in Bahamas, Vegas, yeah. mine in the Bahamas. And it's the only one I've missed, but it's the one where you guys met Dennis so Graham. There were, but there were 17 dudes, all the champagne boys. Our listeners know. By the way, uh, side note on uh, what, what were we doing this morning? I gave a big shout out to the champagne it boys. It was like on breakfast television. Breakfast television, because they are, they're asking about Drake's dad. And I was just like, just telling them all about the champagne boys. They're like, why are you called the champagne boys? Because I was like, because one afternoon, Julian decided to get day drunk only on champagne. <laughs> it was after game one against the Wizards, uh, Raptors playoffs. Is that what it was? And we were drinking at the ship in the middle. Of the, it was like, because the game ended at three. Oh, uh, that's so funny. I'll never forget. <laughs> I don't remember the rest of the day, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, go ahead. Uh, so the story of the song. So trying to contact, you tell the story of the oh, song. Oh, well, the story of the yeah, song. You basically, the song. um, is it's actually funny. Well, it's about the camaraderie the Champagne Boys all have and the love we have for each other. And this particular road trip that we took in celebrating Julian's bachelor party started in Memphis, went to Nashville, ended up in Louisville. We had a great time everywhere we went. Nothing in particular happened, but there was just kind of the magic of the night and running in, and things unexpected things happening. And in Memphis, we ran into Drake's dad, which was very exciting. And uh, But also the chorus... It's funny. The chorus is, because I hold you so high, I hold you so tight, so hold up that light so I can come home to find you. And the chorus is really like just a, an appreciation of our girlfriends. Somehow we have girlfriends and wives. I don't know how, for the most part. But uh, it's about that feeling of it's like the stuff we do with the Champagne Boys, I think, is is most satisfying because we have uh, you know, our partners that are holding us down. So that that's sort of what the song is about. Carry on with the creation of the video. <laughs> so, uh, get the video. Obviously, the song's called Drake's Dad. You were, everyone in the band was very keen on getting Drake's Dad, or it seemed like a bit of a bust. We got uh, hooked up with a production company who knew a guy who shot the Drake's video for Worst Behavior, which featured Drake's Dad. So, he's contacting the people who produced the, the Worst Behavior video by Drake. Anyway, we end up getting hooked up with Drake's uncle because Drake's dad had a bunch of scheduling conflicts. He was in China. Then he was hanging out in the Bahamas or something. The Bahamas. He was in L.A. for, uh, I don't know, it was Father's Day coming up. So he was hanging out with his, Drake was hanging out with his dad. So it was like, okay, Drake's uncle, let's see how much he looks like him. He looks enough like him. <laughs> he's For some reason, he's five inches shorter and his mustache is much more sp- sparse than uh drake's actual dad <laughs> dennis yeah yeah drake's dad dennis uh we'll call him is <laughs> which is actually <laughs> his name. name i've never <laughs> called him that but <laughs> uh, he has the world's thickest mustache and that's that's his trademark right so we end up just shooting with drake's uncle it was a four-day shoot uh-huh. so the first two days i went down without mark and we just shot uh, if anyone's seen the video there's a bunch of shots of just All random the people and the, the camera's pushing in on them. There's people like doing backflips and a bunch of interesting people around the Memphis and Nashville. So that's what we did for the first two days. Then on the third and fourth day, that's when you guys showed up, the yep. band and Mark showed up for all the uh, more important shots as I kind of just sat back and watched Mark do his thing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we shot with Drake's uncle, you guys meeting the uncle, pretending it's Drake's dad. Yeah. You, you guys talking with Drake's he was uncle. He's like a body double, a stand in. Well, the plan was he's uh, a stand-in until we eventually do not Secured. Get, we absolutely thought we weren't going to get Drake's dad. Really? The, uh, the I don't think you ever thought it wasn't going to happen. Max is very optimistic. Yeah, I was under the impression that we weren't going to get Drake's dad. So As I was, were I Mark thought, and I. Yeah. yeah. I was under the Mike D's a realist. We sure. But you're yeah. very optimistic. This is, this is, Max is a dreamer. It's a good, <laughs> yeah, he always has like a childlike wonder. Yeah, yeah if, it was, we'll if it was up to me, we, we wouldn't do 
hardly anything. But, uh, <laughs> Period. Yeah, just in general. So it's it's a great thing. And then- so we go home. We edit the video. It's done in in our eyes. We send it to you guys, and it seemed like you guys liked it. Loved it. Yeah. But one thing was missing. Drake's dad wasn't involved. So Max seems to think we can still push. So we push for uh, Drake's dad. We contact him again. So then we end up offering him uh, an undisclosed <laughs> amount of 4500 American <laughs> <laughs> for an hour's work. And uh, Mike and I, as uh, people who listen to the pod religiously, uh, <laughs> as, as my mom and sister know, that you and I had a shoot on the weekend. We were supposed to shoot Drake's dad. We were shooting a, a Chevy spot in Muskoka. Yep, we were. So I was supposed to finish the shoot in Muskoka and fly out to L.A. To L.A. to shoot Drake's dad because Drake's dad uh, was staying there. I, I don't even know if he's living in Memphis. Yeah, he, no, yeah, he lives in L.A. now. Okay, so I'm f***ed because as soon as I finish the shoot, I got to go, and then my life's going to be ruined because I have to edit the shoot I'm doing in Muskoka. I end up contacting a friend who used to work at Much Music named Ray Wong, and he fills in as the uh, substitute director for a day and shoots the footage of you dancing around with Drake's dad. Yeah. And it's just you. The band doesn't go down. It's just Max. Yeah. And then we, I told Max, I was like, have fun with uh, Dennis. Like, if, if there's an outtake, you know, just, like, slap him on the shoulder, have a good laugh. Always be cognizant that the camera's rolling because we only have an hour with him. Keep it going and keep it fun. But when we uh, we ended up getting the footage back, Max t- took that to the ultimate extreme. <laughs> you're constantly pushing Dennis, and like, <laughs> your arms around him. You're like kissing him. You're like piggy Mar- bags. Mark and I are looking at the footage. You should. Just, at first, we're laughing, uh-huh. and then we're like, "Oh no, this is a, a nightmare." There's no footage with just Dennis looking cool. cool. <laughs> it's just me just, all just, over. Just, a white guy just yeah. jumping on his back for, for 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah. We wanted like uh, like a maybe a, a 20 80 split. Like 20% of the time you're with Dennis looking cool dancing. And then 80% is just Dennis dancing to the song, looking cool, fixing his cuff link, showing his uh, OVO chain, whatever. <laughs> it's 99% you hugging and kissing <laughs> Dennis, pushing him. And then Dennis starts pushing you back. <laughs> and it's like this weird like buddy comedy. <laughs> And then inexplicably, we did not ask for this, but there's two like black women show up. And then all of a sudden it's the four of you guys just partying together. And Mark and I are laughing so hard we're crying until the footage runs out and we realize there's no more footage. We have to deal with this footage. And, and, and after the shoot, Max is like, oh man, it's so great. We got the greatest stuff. It's But you got like caught up in like, the, the camaraderie of hanging in the camaraderie of hanging with Drake's dad. We really got along. So it was a uh, it was a bit of a task to edit that part. I won't lie. And it well, uh, it turned out great. <laughs> it turned out great. <laughs> Sounds like you could just edit that that alone into a pretty hilarious piece. Just <laughs> we got to be on the you scenes. told it would be a different video. It would be a total like buddy comedy movie. But uh, it luckily it worked out in the end. Oh, yeah, man, that's so funny. And and then it. Uh, after it was released, it got all this press. Yeah, I was going to say, well, it's, it's, it's been that. crazy. Like, so, so you guys released this video, and I think just by nature of it being Drake's dad, it's going to get some attention. But I feel like it blew up even beyond, I don't know, any of our expectations. What did you guys think? What, Mike D, what did, you, what did you think when Max originally came and goes, I'm writing a song called Drake's called Dad? Called Drake's Dad. Well, yeah, definitely that was, well, I, when we first started calling it Drake's Dad, it was just like, that was a working title. And then Max was like, <laughs> yeah. we, we should just call it Drake's Dad. I was like... My first impression was like, that's a bad idea. But then my second feeling was like, actually, that's kind of cool. People will see it on the track list and they'll be like, that's a funny thing. And then when we started talking about the video, I remember being like talking to Max about it. And the initial pitch we had was like, let's just do our trip. Like, it's a story about the trip. Let's not beat around the bush too much. Let's just like, you know, have it be this this bachelor trip and, and, and do it sort of literally, but in a funny way. And then when Max started dreaming about Drake's dad, that's when I was like, this is going to be something that people will find funny on the internet. Like I thought it would be just people would be like, yeah, that's funny. Drake's dad. But then when like, you know, MTV and like world star hip hop and stuff like that, were posting it. Uh, that's when it, it got kind of funny. Like, yeah, it was a, it was a crazy day. Cause we just played Lollapalooza on the Thursday and we were driving home on the Friday, the day the video came out like a week ago. And just in the van, we were in the van for like eight hours. The whole band was together. It was just like every six minutes, something new would come through the wire and be like, what? Like Pitchfork covered it. Time Magazine covered it. 
MTV World Star Hip Hop. It was just like one thing after the next. Yeah, it got one hundred and fifty thousand views on World Star Hip Hop. Yeah, it's crazy. But it doesn't translate to the YouTube. The YouTube because they, they they rip the video. But oh, uh, why do they do that? Uh, Everybody should. I think they put their like watermark on it and right, stuff yeah. for like their fight videos and other. But everyone media. has to check out the comments oh section my God. of that. Yeah, I get co- called like a corny ass n word a lot. Yeah. Cracker <laughs> a lot, like for a lot of cracker. <laughs> really? Yeah, well, and, and homo because I'm I guess because I'm feeling up Dennis the whole video. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I stand by that comment. But. <laughs> that was Shane posting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Shaney boy sixty nine. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I mean, it's been so exciting, and I feel like, I mean, aside from a few comments, I feel like the, uh, do you guys feel like the reception's been, like, super positive, or you guys? It, it's been great, and the thing about the song is that, musically speaking, and, like, lyrically, it's, like, m- one of my favorite things we've ever done as a band. Like, so it's not like it's some parody song or some joke song uh, that, we, that we're not proud of, um, and so... And I'm just glad the song is getting attention. And, you know, the internet is so vast and there's so many bands putting out music. And, like, to get any little bit of attention when you're putting out a new record is awesome. The thing, though, I did not predict. Because on the, on the Friday when we were getting all this, like, media attention, I was like, oh, this is great. Awesome. It'll get cheered around. But today and yesterday, as we're doing all this press, literally every single interview starts with, so tell us about Drake's dad. And I've literally told the story, but all right, there were 17 dudes in a minivan, three minivans driving the American South. Yeah. I've told that story like a thousand times already today. Yeah. It's, it's stuff of legends. The <laughs> Champagne Boys. It's always funny. I, my favorite part of the reaction uh, was in our own Facebook Boys or, or Champagne Boys Facebook group. So for our listeners, all four of us, along with like 20 other dudes, are in this Facebook group, which we've talked about a lot on this podcast, yeah. called the Champagne Boys message group. Yeah, so there's like just like a lot of like shit talking and other stuff going <laughs> on in there. But it, also, one of the things that's really great about the Champagne Boys, but also kind of funny when you're just observing, is uh, just like the self-congratulations that generally <laughs> happens throughout the group and just how psyched everyone was, especially Adam, who gets name dropped in the song, which he's called the nut on this pod. Oh, the nut. So the nut. Okay. So sorry. <laughs> hey, that's a secret for our listeners. Uh, the lyric, uh, Adam took off his pants again. Yeah. The nut took off his pants. again. I think we can share yeah, that. We can take, and, yeah. I, and, and I, you know, I, I am sure that his, that uh, Drake's dad would have never been spotted if Adam wasn't on the trip, just cause he's such a Drake and general meme fanatic. So yeah, it's, it's, it, everybody in the group has their uh, has their role to play. I find in the Champagne Boys group, though, Mike D, you don't really uh, say too much. No, you don't pipe up. I but I don't I don't really pipe up on the internet in general at all. Like I've I've kind of like gone off the. Grid. You used to be a message board guy, though. Yeah, message boards are different. There, that was that was that was like my people that like also didn't text anybody else, but would just <laughs> anonymously talk on the internet. Like I don't really text anybody. Like I I text my wife and my mom, and like Max tells me things that like I have to do on <laughs> band related. That's that's uh, I, that's I would say it. that's like my three my top three uh, messaging. I was yeah. I was saying it's uh, when we're doing all this press. Um, you know, we did like a CBCQ interview this morning, which is great, and like that's like kind of a more serious, like long form conversation, but we're doing a lot of like these little press hitters where it's like the weather network, you know, we did breakfast television, we did e-talk and you can't really, it's, it's kind of a weird form. Uh, I mean, it's good. It's press and it's promo and you do it, but when they ask you questions, it's, it's hard to dive too deep into it. So we end up kind of just being silly. Yeah. And so I gave the champagne boys a big shout out on breakfast television this morning. And I try, I'm pulling it up on my phone here. I tried to remember that expression that gets dropped a lot in the champagne boys message group. Uh, and I was, I was like pain for the champagne, uh, <laughs> real champagne. pain for my, my champ champ friends. friends and champagne for my real friends. That's a Drake lyric. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. yeah. I didn't realize that. Anyway, I tried to say it and then I got corrected on Twitter. Uh, Cause I was like, <laughs> you know, it's that old expression. Champagne and the friends, and <laughs> like a fifty-year-old man. Yeah, <laughs> and Max just looked over at me like I was going to help. I was like, I got, <laughs> "You're on a seven, message board." It's seven a.m. Yeah, I was like, "What?" <laughs> um, it, that, the other phrase I thought you were going to say was, uh, "Every man dies, not every man really lives," okay. which is what we were going to get tattooed. That's Braveheart, yeah. yeah. Oh, is that a brave heart? Did you guys end up getting brave. tattoos, or did that not happen? No, we no. didn't. No. Well, but I have to mention because uh, Mark loves his butt, Mark Myers. Oh yeah, yeah. We, yeah Co-director oh. of the. Uh, Drake's, the video, video. Drake's head video. He played the nuts 
butt. Yeah, he was the butt double. <laughs> like that sounds like he he played it, but no, like bongo. He, he bongo. was the butt double in the video. And Mark is a former male model with a, a, a great, beautiful, great Aryan butt, and butt. still in great shape, and loves showing it off. Pretty modest guy for the most part. I'd like to think. I know it's you like don't a, think so. You think it's faux modesty with Mark? I think he's actually a pretty modest guy. Listen, if I were Mark, I'd be taking off. My if shirt you say all something good about Mark, he'll yeah. be like, "Oh, pish posh. That's not true at all. I did nothing." But if you say something bad, he'll he'll be like, "Ah." Oh, Got and pride though. That's yeah. okay. Yeah, I'm not saying he's not modest. It's just he yeah. knows he's awesome. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. So this new album, Morning Report. What are your hopes for the future as it's coming out? <sighs> this is like now I'm asking a real question because yeah. you guys are a legit band. Oh uh, yeah, real guest. We uh, we're really excited. I don't know. I you know, don't, it's it's kind of crazy that we get to play in a band in general. Like as much as we complain about this long day and are like yawning and stuff on the mics, it, it's kind of it's kind of crazy that we get we kind of get paid enough money to have normal lives. Like we worked a real job, but we don't work a real job. We just get to like travel around and play music. And so I think my hope is that, you know, just we can continue, we can continue to do what we're doing and, and hopefully uh, always try to like strive for better. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a really difficult industry in a lot of ways. So, you know, we, we have high hopes though. Yeah, I, I think oh, I was just gonna say if you could be doing this in twenty years, you think you would do it like kind of like tragically hip? Yeah, I mean it's a f-ing great job. I don't know. We like, probably wouldn't be doing it at the same pace, and and I think eventually, as any artist gets a little older, they probably slow down a little bit. But that's uh, but otherwise, yeah, why not? I mean, it's a, there's lots of super old artists that are like if you look at Paul McCartney, like why the hell is Paul McCartney doing it? Certainly not for money. Like he, there's that uh, Rolling Stones interview where they asked Mick Jagger if he'd be doing it when he's older, and he's like, oh, I'm not going to be a 45 year old man out there with my cane. <laughs> and then he's, he's like 75 <laughs> with this cane. You know the thing um, I think about because like, and it's I try to keep this in mind because I think it's a healthy thing to do is. Uh, you know, today is like a very exciting day. We're doing all this press. We're doing like a release show at the Mod Club. You know, just like the press and we, like everybody's. We're announcing two Massey Hall shows tomorrow. There's Ooh. so much shit going on. Um, but I really try to remember that it's like this is just one small part of like hopefully a much bigger thing, and just n- not to get too high or too low. Just realize that it's like just put in good work, and then. In a couple of years, the songs that came out today hopefully will be sung by lots of people at Way Home Festival in 2018 because we played that festival a couple of weeks ago and we put out 11.11 two years ago. And in the time, it was very exciting putting out that song, but it's never been a bigger song than it was last week like because it had time to permeate in the culture. And I try to keep that in mind. And it's kind of a comforting thing to me. It's just like, just like trust if, the, if you're really proud of the material and you go out and work it and you tour it hard and you make a connection with people that in a couple of years, it might mean something totally different in a really beautiful way. Thanks for your time, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. You got anything to say there, Shane? I'm sorry, Shane, about the whole, the whole video thing. No, <laughs> but no, no hard but feelings. All well that tell well. me I have the next video. <laughs> you, and, you, <laughs> you, 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 and you told me, yeah, pick a song. Yeah, that is true. Hey, we, we should talk. <laughs> Sounds like and, and then yeah, some. Exactly. we should talk about that one. Okay. You got a favorite song on the record? I like Drake that a lot, and then some. I don't know. Uh, I like that's a pro all. pushing the latest single. Do you got a favorite song on the record? <laughs> I don't know. I, I like I like making do. I think that that song's uh, a pretty cool song. I think it's it's not as like uh, there's less bells and whistles and stuff, but I think it's got a a really great heart to it, and I just think it sounds good. Um, last last little thing is uh, a little uh, nugget in the video is uh, I'm wearing a Champagne Boys T-shirt in many of the scenes. That was I that, make that, a cameo. I forgot. Oh, that's true. Well, Shane makes a cameo in the video when we're standing in the parking lot in our swim shorts. There's a random guy kneeling down. The sixth yeah. member of the, the sixth random because I'm a champagne boy. And if you pay attention, you can see that it comes after the champagne boys logo is shown. Yeah. Did you guys shoot an alt where Shane wasn't with you for? No, I, think no, I, think I was directing the piece. Yeah, <laughs> Shane, Shane was very insistent on being there for that. It's, uh, and I actually I designed the shirt. Yeah, logo. Mike designed oh, the logo. You There's, shined the champagne boys and then, logo. And then, yeah. and then our friend Dan, he had it ordered. And it was a big surprise because he was ordering a bunch of champagne boys tank tops for Julie Julian's birthday. It's a surprise, Julian. And then I said, get me like a, a sweet t-shirt that I can wear in, in the video. So it was a real group effort. Uh, oh, but also the funniest thing was that Dan was really worried that you, that Shane would ruin the surprise 
for Julian's birthday with the champagne boy shirt because it happened to fall on the same weekend. And he, he thinks you have loose lips and, and you'd spill the secret. And you get too ex- he, he literally quote was like, Shane is going to get way too excited when he sees the champagne boy <laughs> shirt and tell everybody in the group. But he can't because Julian's party wow. is not till Saturday. I think he was even so paranoid as to like be worried that you would take like a snap on social media and then like Julian would like look really close and be able to reach, which I, I did take a snap. Yeah, it, was, it would have been impossible to know. It's a it's a pretty small badge like logo. Yeah, it was a big project for Dan though to get those t-shirts <laughs> made. So I, I understand why he was uh, paranoid, a little worried. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's it. That's all. That's our episode. Uh, we're gonna thank the Arkells, <laughs> uh, Mike D and Max K. Thank uh, Shaney Boy sixty nine for You're coming welcome. on. Um, where can they follow us, Max? Yeah, you can find us on Instagram and Twitter at Mike on Much. Uh, please leave a comment on uh, iTunes because apparently that's the way iTunes is rigged. You just have to like leave comments and then you get to the top of the charts. Oh, is that a fact? So, yeah, so just everybody make fake accounts, make lots of comments, put us to the top of the charts. Sounds good. Uh, all the artwork is done by Jenna Gregory of jennasdoodles.com. You can find her stuff there. Huge thank you to Greg Stewart, who whose office we're using right now. We're in his office right and now. And he also was parading us around the building for the last two hours. Yeah. He was our liaison today at Bell Media. I saw Ashley, too. It looks like she's yeah, Ashley. putting in work. And Ashley listens to the pod all the time. She's, oh, yeah, well, there you have it. She's seen in the flesh. Mike and Watch Podcast is produced by Max Kerman, and I am your host, Mike Veerman. See you next week. If we don't, don't die, die on, on the, the weekend. weekend. That wasn't very tight. Yeah. <laughs>